across the country and indeed across North America, retailers are being allowed to reopen in different ways in different places, social distancing measures in place, safety precautions for both both customers and staff also an added cost to many of them. Uh, but the big question was, at what rate would the customer return? We get some insight on that from Brian Hill, the CEO of Vancouver-based retailer Aritzia. Brian, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Amanda, for having me. So let's just start right there. I mean, obviously, a devastating period for a, a business like yours. Uh, but you've got, I know you've got a strong online side. Uh, I want to start, though, with the pace of reopening and what you're seeing. What's your kind of front row lens on how that's going? Well, we, we closed all our stores March 16th. And the minute we closed them, we, we figured we are put a plan together on how we're going to open the stores. And we predicted that they would be opening in batches in different places in different regions. So that was sort of fairly obvious that's happened and that's come to fruition now. And so Western Canada mm -hmm. is completely open. Eastern Canada is, we have a few stores open and the US um, is just starting to reopen as well for us. Some people have gotten a little bit farther ahead in the US. We've just taken our time. We 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 want to make sure the health and safety of our of our both our people that work for us and our customers is is top top of the list. So we're making sure that's done and uh the good news though is that we didn't furlough or lay off anybody. So because of that, um we're able to uh, get our stores open and open quickly when when the time comes and we we press go. So that's been that's been uh extremely uh, helpful for us as well. What kind of costs have you had to absorb, Brian, uh, because of the, the closures? And I think of things like, you know, inventory that sits unsold and maybe has to, you know, you've got to skip over. Um, what, what are some of the things you've had to work through uh, to get past this and back into swinging business? So I think when this first happened, my first uh, stop was our people and our customers but second was the inventory we have a lot of inventory we have a lot of inventory in our stores so it was really important that we made sure that that we were going to make find a way to work through that inventory we pivoted to e-commerce almost immediately we were able to get some of the product out of the stores into the into our e-commerce network and our channels and our e-commerce responded extremely well um, our distribution center people were great our um, our, uh, all our, our customer care centers were in full force. And, and a lot of the people, because we didn't furlough them from a retail perspective, helped chip in on, on, in both in the distribution centers and as well in, uh, in uh, mm -hmm. helping with the customer call centers and things as well. So we're in pretty good shape with that whole thing and, and pretty excited about what that did for our business. What do you see when you do reopen a store with uh, with kind of safety protocols in place? What do you see by way of customers returning? What's the volume like for you? You know, that's been interesting. It, it's been we've been really pleasantly surprised with the way customers have responded. I mean, we've had lineups at a lot of our stores and, um, you know, we more or less unless it's been pouring with rain out in Vancouver and Robson Street, we've had a lineup almost daily. What we've found is actually the limitation mm -hmm. isn't with the customers returning. The limitations being our capacity and our ability to, to bring people in the store safely and have them have them shop and gain that world class customer experience, the everyday luxury experience we offer. And we want to make sure that they're enjoying the experience in the stores and that and, and they feel safe at the same time. So we've had limitations actually letting people in more so than actually people wanting to come in. And so that's that's been a real pleasant surprise. But then once again, we're in a bubble here, right? We're in a bubble in, in, in Western Canada a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, we've had far less effect from COVID-19. And so I don't know what we're going to see in other areas with other customers and, and how they will come back and what the new normal for them actually will be. When we, when we think of that new normal, one of the things obviously will be how we all work um, near term and then even longer term, whether there's some real changing trends. Have you already started with your team, started to think about uh, changing the mix of product that you have? I know you've got a lot of, uh, you know, that ready to wear to work kind of items. Uh, do, you, do you change that up a bit or are you in the right spot? I mean, I think we're in the right spot. We've always had a broad selection of product categories, whether it be active wear, whether it be uh, dresses for going out, whether it be going to work and things like that. So we've always had that. You know, I think there's been, you know, the new normal for retail hasn't isn't some new thing. It, it started, 
years and years ago. I mean, there's been a shift to e-commerce, and and really what we're finding is is this is just an acceleration of what we've been looking at and, and our planning and strategies throughout the whole industry now for almost a decade. And so this is probably accelerated to COVID-19. I'm not sure it's going to be any different. Nothing's going to uh, changed dramatically here at this point in time and it's just accelerated or probably rather than being in 2025 where this happens it's going to be next year and it's so everything's being shifted up four years but and there's been more working from home and things going on anyway so we just look at this as an acceleration of what's happened in the past and and uh you know, so product categories have shifted over the over the years and certainly with us because we have a multi-brand strategy because we have a broad breadth of product we're we're seeing uh mm -hmm. we have the ability to shift and 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 move into the areas that that the customers are, are looking for so it's been very successful for us you are also vertically integrated has that been a strength for you in terms of uh of your own supply chains and how you manage that uh, including in the shift to uh, to digital does it give you more control over um, how and where you place things yeah, most certainly it has. Um, it's allowed us to to control our supply chain a lot more with all our product um, that's that's been coming and going over the last sort of three months and, and looking into the future as well. And then we've been looking at increasing the breadth of the product. Um, you know, for, retail has four walls and you're limited to the amount of product you can carry. And so we're now looking at this opportunity online is a ability to expand our product offerings into things like intimates and swim and other categories like that, shoes and things that our stores may or may not be set up for certain stores. So e-commerce, we don't have those. We can carry uh, uh, more inclusive sizing and and have have the ability to carry more inclusive sizing online because we don't have limitations in four walls, different lengths and things like that, more colors. So we're looking at a at a serious expansion of our product uh, line now, and that'll take a few years to come to full full fruition. But we're we're starting on it immediately, doing that because of this uh, shift to e-commerce and the accelerated shift to e-commerce allowed us to do so. So interesting opportunities being created here. Um, you know, at the same time, we know a business like yours is looking to preserve cash. Uh, we know analysts are, are looking for you to do the same. How do you kind of square that circle where you're looking to invest and think of the future, but you also want to kind of keep your balance sheet looking good right now? Well, our balance sheet does look good right now. I mean, three months ago, we had a week or two looking and thinking, okay, if e-commerce is shut off, what happens then? But fortunately, uh, I think our leadership in the country has been fairly practical in allowing certain key industries to stay open. And, and I think they've recognized that uh, distribution and e-commerce is key. And so that's that's been very successful for most of our retailers and it's really been our lifeline. So uh, as our stores now reopen and everything else, we see uh, ourselves getting back to normal here and certainly from a revenue perspective in the not too distant future. So we're pretty excited about that and we think our cash flow is going to per be perfectly fine to, to continue to do that and, and continue to invest in our business, continue to look at new opportunities and continue to be successful like we have been for the last 30 years.